Hello there, welcome. Today we're having a look at the new hero, new alluring desire. And I'm gonna tell you straight away, she seems kinda busted. Um, basically her whole vibe is you are going to disrupt the enemy hero each turn and meanwhile push some damage. And while, you know, there are heroes with attack reacts like Dory where the ceiling is kind of calculable so you, you know that if she has two hand cards and let's say two floating the maximum she can re really buff is six um that's not the case with new um new has so many different buffs that can go so high um that basically a two card hand could actually buff 10 and then there's no real way in blocking in just safety blocking something like that and well that unpredictability kind of makes the variance in the, those games um, way higher than it is um, in games against the Dawnblade Dory, for example. Then, on top of that, of course, you can use uh, strong cards like Codex of Frailty in combination with Leave No Witness and the all-time favorite Command and & Conquer. And we have not even started spoken, uh, speaking about the mask yet, because that mask that New is using basically lets you pitch a full chi card and the enemy has to at that point this no actually banish a card from his hand so once again you force him to play a um a smaller hand on his turn then there are cards like siren's call that's a check rig that doesn't buff your attack but it will let you look at the enemy's hand and you can pick a blue out of it to add to the chain link now do that against a ko that's all of a sudden stranded with three red cards and maybe two of them don't even block and you've just, you know, made him skip a whole turn while leaking damage. Okay, so, um, that's that. Let's concentrate on the gameplay here. E-Strike, a phenomenal card in uh, Nu. Sometimes you struggle with the eye hand composition, you have too many buffs, something like that. And this way you can just, you know, always convert your hand when you have an E-Strike in it. These equipments are the... Stilettos and the Arousing Wave. One gives go again with an attack react, the other one buffs for one. And Arousing Wave buffs for one um, on each, on like any attack. You can um, buff a command and conquer on seven, uh, to seven on demand. I leave no witness to five. The enemy's arsenal really is never safe, and that's why I'm also choosing to get that uh, one block out, that battle one block, so that I'm not wasting it. Now, already in turn 2, I'm deciding to play Fra Frailty Codex next. Very strong against, um, well, ninjas, really. His Kakara will only come in for one. Uh, whatever's in his arsenal, if he decides to defend it, uh, will have one less power. And also, well, I make him discard one card now. Once again, disrupting the enemy, leaking damage. And I'm not sad leaking um, or going down to 27 here. Because once New has tempo, it is really hard for the enemy to come back. Uh, unless New really bricks, but that is sort of hard and nah, it doesn't happen too often. And yeah, well, as you're seeing, I am not giving Zen a chance to play a turn next. If he gives me all his equipment now, um, that's fine. He still loses a card. And I believe what he chose was ear strike, right? So he can come in with <laughs> four. <laughs> Sweet. Um, we have a looking for scrap. Again, a go again card. Quite important to, um, once you have tempo with new, be able to just convert each of your hands. And then we can just come in with some go again attacks now. Finish up with that persuasive prognosis here, which um, says that if it hits, I can look into the enemy's hand, I believe, and banish a card. And that just a nick, just next to it, is a attack react that buffs a card with base 1, um, plus 5. So once again, he will have to block this blue 1 attack for at least 6 to be safe against this. Now I'm not quite sure if I have a target for my looking for scrap right now. If I don't, I can just... Well, throw the levels of enlightenment here. Even get the draw card because Zen decided not to block the dagger, which you can't, you know, be too mad about. 
And then we have the looking for scrap for our next turn to ensure we have Gog in there. And now that Codex becomes kind of awkward. Well, we can use it as, as an extra pitch source in case we want to use our hands. But also, of course, we can again come in with the dagger. Of course, blocks out. Now, this buff is kind of wasted since he blocked six. Um, could have just chosen to keep it, though it's not clear we are drawing into another attack for one, which we are actually not. And now you, you'd think, well, you don't have an assassin attack. You have all these buffs, these blues that don't attack all buff. Well, what are you going to do? Well, just going to pitch into the mask and make him discard, make him discard anyways. Um, if we need to skip a turn, <laughs> he also will have to skip one. Of course, we can just recycle that codex because three codex is just not enough. Three codices. And now, uh, please discard one. Uh, it's important to know that this mask is an attack reaction, so you can't just do it whenever. Whenever You have to do it while attacking. And now we're equaling life with the opposing Zen. Um, well, since we kind of bricked, he was able to, uh, to keep a bit of a hand here. And that is what you need to um, look for when playing, playing against Nu. Keep your life totals high in those really big turns. And then when it seems there's only vanilla damage coming, that's when you can keep your hand and then you kind of have to hope that on those um, hands you can also push a lot of damage. Fortunately for us, it does not seem like Zen had a great hand. He's already patching a red and a blue just to attack with this weapon. And now we have this Siren's Call in our hand, which I talked earlier about, which will force, just force, a blue out of Zen's hand. So the question becomes how to sequence everything. Everything. We could probably just, I'm not sure if we can activate looking for scrap. Um, it seems like we are not able to activate it as of now. In that case, I think we can just come in with the dagger first. Then have our tunic counter and the one floating to play Siren's Call, the Double Trouble and the Venom Spite in our turn. And again, looking for scrap goes into the arsenal. Well, with the dagger hitting, we also get go again on this double trouble. If we now close the chain, we can get this into our grave to activate looking for scrap. That on the other hand will mean though that we are not disrupting Zen on this hand. So um, we are actually pushing quite a bit of damage here. So that, of course, is the the other great thing. If you don't draw disruption, it's quite likely that you just draw raw damage. So if Zen does have that good hand, then it's, I mean, okay, he can keep it, but he's still leaking, and it's not like we have two blocks or non-blocks. We can just block with our whole next hand. And then, well, that tempo doesn't really gain him anything. Um, hustling that Siren's Call might have been uh, sort of a mistake because it forces the enemy to block, right? So you are, while you're getting a card of the hand out of the hand, you're also denying yourself damage. And therefore it just isn't practical in too many situations against decks like Zen. Against Kayo, again, I would just be happy to throw it in every turn. 
Okay, but now Zenon has big turn. Um, really barely leaking anything. I've decided to not even block out too much here because we do have quite a well-functioning hand. We'll be able to come in with Bonds of Agony, which disrupts hand. And the Command and Conquer, which disrupts Arsenal. Now, why am I throwing the Command and Conquer first? I have my boots, and just as the arms, the go again on from the boots will go onto any attack. So we can already just, you know, get some get some um, blocks out of him. Clear the field for Bones of Agony here. Or maybe we just force him to, to block us. Like, I'm not sure if we can play a Siren's Call in a normal attack on a CNC. I need to look again. In that case, we could just also force him to block with a third card on this attack. And again, let him skip a turn. Now, yes, okay, this actually just goes on to any attack. So, Zen invested all his equipment and a card from hand to hopefully have a big turn next. And we're just saying, well, uh, show us what you what you have planned here. And there's now two chi in his hand. And basically only that real turn starter there. So we just get that off him. Um, and then let's see does the math work out here now we can unfortunately unfortunately not get three um, attack reacts if we were to play that bonds of agony this turn because it only gets that buff and that on hit if you played three attack reacts in that link What I forgot here is that Siren's Call, of course, also draws us a card if we put a blue card under the chain. So I could have just swung a dagger first with that with that Bonds of Agony, for example. Since we now IP'd ourselves and sort of wasted that one card. And now, you know, it seems like, well, we're both at a similar HP, getting kind of low already. Um, Assassins always shine whenever the life tolls are low. That has been the case with Uz Uzuri, and it's um, just the just same with Nu. Might even to a bigger extent, since the enemy now is just not able to say, okay, I no block and just take damage. But he basically always has to expect us to have enough pumps to just kill him on the spot, and therefore he is forced to always safety block. And now. With that bonds and the his in hand, we will create just such a situation where there's potentially, I mean, there can easily be how much 14 damage here if we were to play two just a nick, which is a 0 for 5 buff. Um, and let's say we pop that arousing wave our hand, then that bonds of agony goes up to 13 and it could even go up to 14. But also, you know, we could just have another big attack in hand. Now we're popping that go again, and all of a sudden he always uh, already invested two cards, you know. Now if he doesn't have an instant, we rip one card out of his hand with the Bonds of Agony. Mm, unless he's able to, you know, block it out in the end. But now we still get to play our light levels of enlightenment, threaten some damage, and we all, we've already reduced his hand size to two. Mm, I think going for the draw card here was just a strict mistake. I should have just gone for the push damage in Arsenal, the slither. Though the slither Arsenal can become awkward, so I th it might just be alright to go for the draw card there. 
And now we have a hand that is very well playable. We can just convert um, it fully. And threaten way more than, than Zen's life total now. We have a total of four resources basically to work with here. So ideally we pitch for a dagger. Why am I missing something? No, I think, okay, well, we can put the dagger in between. But ah, now on the other hand, we might just want to use the arousing wave as well. And in that case, we don't have enough resources to pitch into a dagger. And then we just dump all of our aggregates in the first bonds of agony. This will get buffed to at least 10. Then if it hits, we get a card out of his hand and we deal damage. If he actually blocks with, well, I guess four cards, he doesn't have a turn. And that um, pick to pieces will do deal quite a bit of damage. Um, blocking six will never be the right answer because... Bonds of Agony will at least go up to 7 because of the 3 it gets from itself and then all the buffs and new do at least 3, all the relevant ones. So yeah, this goes up to 7 now. To 10 actually, because yeah, we also played the Hiss before. Now he would be able to put that arousing wave onto it for another plus 1, the Fang Strike for another plus 1. Well, now, what just happened is that we were able to look into his hand. Well, let me see. Um, He blocked with two cards. Oh, and he had to stir the pot in the hand. So that's a card he can't do anything with. And the last card got banished off of the Bonds of Agony on hit. So now he's going down to four without any cards in hand. And we still have that um, arsenal, which is coming in for one. Whenever it gets, or when it get, gets buffed by an attack reaction, no, actually, if, if you play an attack reaction the first time, it gets buffed for one extra. Um, and then we actually have two extra buffs. So this is coming in for five. He doesn't have any armor. If there's not a D-react in arsenal, he's just dead. We can also buff it with the, with the dagger we just played. So yeah, as you have seen, low life totals is pretty, um, pretty good for Nuru. Even if he survives that turn, we have full tempo, a full grip with a full hand, and we have all these, these attack reacts he needs to respect. As, I, as I've said before, he always needs to overblock actually, because otherwise he could just die. Um, so yeah, um, Nuru is just a strictly best assassin right now. It's, it's really um, Yuzuri on crack. And I highly recommend you give it a go. It's very fun to play if you're the new. It's not fun to play against the new at all. So yeah, that's that's one of the new heroes. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.